So, the return of Jafar. Um, I, I really do try to kind of up the quality of these videos each time. I try to make each one of these Disney Direct DVDs just a little bit better than the last one. I, I think this is probably the best one that I've done to date. Um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this one. And uh, the first thing I have to say is uh, a, a very big, very big thank you to... Uh, to a couple of people. Uh, the first is my girlfriend who helped really drive up the view count of this video a lot. Um, she posted um, on Twitter, uh, she, 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 uh, she mentioned Linkara in a tweet asking him to, um, to retweet her tweet which was uh, promoting this video as, uh, as a birthday present to me which was so incredibly sweet of her that was just that was really really wonderful and I got about jeez oh I got like 30 plus new subscribers uh, from that probably which is awesome so hello to all of you and you know thank you for tuning in I, I hope I can continue to entertain you and I also have to of course thank Linkara for retweeting and help drive up the view count of this a lot and help this get some decent recognition uh, at least decent for me and uh, I think it's it, it's it's got quite a few uh, as of right now. I'm not really sure what the number is, but uh, I, I really want to thank uh, the two of them. And I want to thank you know my girlfriend. I want to thank Linkara. Um, you know, for those of you who who haven't heard of Linkara, he's he's really awesome. Uh, he he does this show called Atop the Fourth Wall. His theme song is actually. Um, one of the songs that I'm doing in Theme Song Throwdown, which I know I'm not going to be finishing this year like I was hoping to, but that's a discussion for another time. Uh, for right now, I'll just I'll say that there will be a link in the video description to go find uh, Linkara's Atop the Fourth Wall segment as well as his blog. And once again, I, I, I doubt he's watching this, but thank you, Linkara, so much for for helping me out uh, with this. This 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 was great. It was a great birthday present. And uh, so uh, on to the review. Um, I think one thing that I sort of clarified a little better in this review, um, still not perfectly, but I, I emphasized it a little better than I have in the past, which was that these direct-to-video Disney movies, um, by and large, don't look very good. The Little Mermaid 2 looked alright, especially by the standards of the Disney direct-to-video sequels. But this one is definitely the worst looking one I've watched so far. And I, I must say that I, I, the animators I d are not to blame for that. I, I never blame the animators because, I mean, I, you've seen the, you know, the, the main Disney movies. Those are great. Those look awesome. You know, those are, these are good animators. We know they're good animators. We've seen them animate well. Um, it is a th uh, something that I don't think I emphasize well enough is that it's not due to any fault of the animators. It's due to budget constraints and really nothing more. Um, the budget constraints for these direct-to-video Disney sequels, especially this one, are really, really restrictive. I know that this this one, like I said, had a budget of $3 million, which might sound like a lot of money, but it's really not. The original Aladdin movie cost $60 million to make, so $3 million, even for the time that this was made, was not very much money at all. So, I, I really just, I, I sort of want to re-emphasize that I, I don't blame uh, the... I don't necessarily think that the creative teams behind these movies are to blame for their poor quality because they're just not given much to work with. They're not given, you know, much of a premise. They're not given much money at all to do this kind of thing. So I, I, I really do do want to say that it's... Uh, I don't think the creative teams are to blame for the poor quality of these in general. I, th I think it's largely a budgetary thing. Which is not to say that you can't do good things with a very low budget. I mean, that's kind of what the whole YouTube thing is all about. But the, you know, that that's very much a different beast from 
any kind of Hollywood movie. So I just sort of, you know, wanted to kind of make that point clear again. Um, I guess I can talk a little bit about a little bit more about this guy, Abyss Mall. Um, I uh, I ragged on him pretty bad in this review, and you know he. I don't think I would mind him so much because as a comedy relief character, he's not terrible. Um, he can actually be quite humorous in his own way. What bothers me about him is that he is put in this position as the leader of this guild of thieves, which just made no sense to me whatsoever. Um, I mean, from the point on, f from the point where he finds Jafar on, you know, I found him pretty believable because they never really mentioned the, th the other thieves again. And, you know, you can kind of forget that he was supposedly in this big leadership role. And, um... <laughs> just and and he becomes a lot more he, he's not as intolerable as I made him out to be I don't think um, he's he's definitely a blundering blithering idiot but he's supposed to be you know he's supposed to be you know a, a moron this comedy relief character and you know he's really not half bad in that regard it's just that making him this leader of this guild of thieves just made no sense to me as I complained about at fair length these <sighs> I felt that I, with, with this scene that I'm that we're looking at right here, I just, by and large, I don't go into a whole lot of details on the. I'm sorry, uh, I don't go into a whole lot of details on the songs generally, in uh, in these Disney Direct DVDs, or at least I haven't in the past. I just sort of give my brief opinion on the song as a whole. Um, like in The Little Mermaid 2, the, the song, for a moment, I just sort of said, oh, well, it's not all that bad, but it's not all that great either, but, you know, I, you know, it's, and I offered one or two little nitpicks, but by and large, I kind of gloss over them, especially in Cinderella 2, I really gloss over the songs in, in that review. Um, that one just was, you know, felt really tedious to me, but I felt like... This one in particular, like these songs in particular, I really should go into a little bit more detail on. And, uh, ah, excuse me, my mouth is dry. And so, <laughs> I, I liked the Raiders of the Lost Ark thing. I had sort of, I, I actually didn't have that gag originally written into the script of this video, but I actually filmed too few reaction shots. Um, to fill out this song, and so I just, I'm like, okay, what's a, a really good, you know, reaction image that I could use or something, and the, the melting face Nazi immediately came to my light, immediately came to mind, so I ended up using that. I think it worked out really well. Um, but, I, I completely lost what I was saying. Oh yes, uh, about the songs. I went into a lot more detail in this review than I typically do into the songs, and I think I should talk about them more in general, probably, um, and talk about why they're bad as opposed to just sort of giving my general opinions on them. But uh, this is... I, I, don't, I don't know how often I will ever go into a, a detailed discussion, you know, like, uh, basically to, to, to have you, the viewer listening to the whole song. I don't know how often I'm going to do that, you know, probably not much at all, but <laughs> this, uh, th this is my, act this right here is my contribution to the, uh, Guile's theme goes with everything internet meme that is, you know, very popular at this time. Um, I used it as the background music for this, uh, for this gag, obviously. But anyway, uh, I felt like Gilbert Gottfried singing was very it was kind of a special thing and kind of deserved to be looked at as a whole. I was not going to subject you to both songs. Um, the reason I, I went through the whole first one was just because there was a good opportunity for a lot of reactionary images, which I you know I really love using. Um, and I, I didn't go in as much into detail on the second one just because it. Uh, it gets a lot more it's a lot more grating and a lot more meandering and it takes a lot longer to go by so I just you know but but I think I did a pretty good job 
of explaining why that one is bad, too. But, anyway, en enough about the songs. I, I can't, I, I must say that I, I'm really impressed by just how much of a technical flop this movie is. It just... The, the errors in continuity in this movie are just really, really bad. And it's not something I noticed when I watched this movie as a kid, but it's glaringly apparent to me in, in this movie. You know, like, from, you know, from people changing outfits from scene to scene, you know, like, the, that, that cage right there that Aladdin just locked, you know, you can see him locking it right there, but later in the, you know, later in the movie it doesn't have a lock or a catch or anything, it's just a door on hinges, and, you know, like the other examples, like Jasmine and Aladdin switching sides, that's another really big one, um, the, the, the flower vase thing, you know, where I did continuity and competence, um, they're just a ton of continuity errors in this movie, and it really speaks. I, I think. I mean, that, that's that's the kind of thing that really should be caught by editors, and I don't know how much. Like, I don't know what the budget allocations for this movie were. I don't know like how much money went to what sort of thing, but I can't imagine that much of it went towards the editing process because there are a lot of continuity gaffes in this movie. Um. And uh, here's uh, the genie. Um, I don't again when again when I was a kid, I don't know that I necessarily noticed the differences in the genie all that much, but they seem really obvious to me in this video. Just because mm, I don't. Uh, th there. The, his lower jaw is really what uh, what is weird to me. It just you know the, the the genie's lower jaw had a very distinctive look to it, and you had a very distinct way of moving in the first Aladdin movie. And they sometimes managed to hit it in this movie, but not very often. And I think not having Robin Williams makes the the performance seem kind of really shallow and sort of phoned in. Which, again, is not the fault of Dan Castellaneta. It's just that, because, like I said, I love Dan Castellaneta. He's a really great voice actor, but this uh, there are some roles that just are... You can only imagine them being played by one person, and for me, the genie can only really be played by Robin Williams. Um, it's just a role that really only works for him. Uh, that's just my opinion, I admit that. But... I, I found it really sort of off-putting in this movie. And also the genie wearing his bracelets. Um, someone in the comments said that the reason that they put the genie's bracelets back on is that he looked kind of naked without them. Um, which I guess is kind of true. You know, if I think back to the end of the first movie, he did look sort of naked without those bracelets. But I see no reason they couldn't have you know, just made them different, or, you know, made them, you know, made them like a light blue with gold accents or something like that, and it's not like they forget that they're a symbol of the oppression, because you'll see right there that J when Jafar tries to leave, the bracelets lock up, and he, you know, the, and light up, and he can't, you know, move, because the bracelets are keeping them there, so they're, they're aware in this film that the bracelets are the symbol of servitude, but they have them on the genie anyway. Um... So, I'm, I must, uh, I don't know, I, 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 that's kind of a nitpick, and I realize that there are some things about these movies that I, I really nitpick to death, like the whole, the whole Head of the Thieves Guild thing, I nitpicked that probably more than was necessary, but there are certain things that just really, really bother me on this scene. I actually felt really bad for Avis Mall in this scene, because... He makes some of the most pathetic little noises that just make you feel terrible for the poor guy. Because Jafar really is, you know, he's an evil bastard. But, like, that, the little noise he makes there with the bubbles, and oh, man, I felt so terrible for him in this scene. Um, but only in that scene, I, I, will, I will clarify that. Um, I don't 
uh, really understand why they redesigned Jafar in this movie. Um, maybe it's may, maybe his black robes were just not looking good at this low budget, like they were looking really flat or something like that. That I could maybe see, but. I mean, a, a lot of thought and a lot of time goes into the design of these characters in these movies and of these costumes. Um, and, you know, in the first movie, I've I've seen uh, character design sheets of Jafar, and they were quite extensive. I mean, he went through a lot of, you know, revisions and versions of how he was supposed to look. And... I just, I don't know why they would sort of change that on a whim, because he was very carefully designed, and he looked really cool um, in the first Aladdin movie. He was, you know, very intimidating, he had a very simple costume, and, uh, you know, it was dark, it was, you know, villain-y, for lack of a better adjective, and it, it, it was effective. Um, but they redesigned his costume into this really goofy, over-designed looking thing. I mean, I, I get that his robes are supposed to be, you know, I, I, th I think what they were going for is that his robes were supposed to be, you know, like red to match the his color as a genie, but I don't know. They, they ended up, like I said, they ended up looking pink, and pink it's just and this this has nothing to do with the gender associations of pink because there are plenty of intimidating female villains and that's and you know I understand that and you know there's there's nothing wrong with the color pink but there are certain things that you just don't use certain colors for like you and pink is one of those colors where it's just like I don't know if it's possible to make someone look intimidating in pink I don't think it can be done. Pink is just not a scary color. It is not a color that invokes fear. I mean, that, and that's, again, that's got nothing to do with like the gender associations of pink or anything like that. That's just basic color theory. And then there's that you know big you know gold spike thing in the middle of his turban. It just I don't know. The changes they made to Jafar just just really kind of baffle me. Um. Uh, I think another really big problem that I had with this movie, and it's... I, I touch on it a fair bit in the review, but uh, in kind of... in a fairly shallow way, just sort of basically calling Aladdin a dick when he's being a dick, but I think the biggest problem with this movie... Um, I shouldn't say the biggest, maybe, maybe like the second biggest, is that Aladdin basically just forgets his lesson that he learned in the first movie. He either forgets or totally ignores it on purpose for the sake of Iago. And, uh, I don't know. It just seems, it seems weird to me. Uh, just, I don't know. But, uh, the... the that uh, he places Iago, you know, above the, his relationships with his father-in-law and his wife. Who actually, I, sh I shouldn't say that. This I did not know this at the time of writing or filming this. Uh, it was pointed out to me in the comments that Aladdin and Jasmine are not actually married in this movie. I thought they. I just kind of assumed they were because at the end of the movie, you know, they were up on the carpet and they were dressed in, you know, very wedding-like clothing, and there was the fanfare and the fireworks and the celebration going on be behind them, so I just kind of assumed that that was their wedding at the end of the first movie, but, um, I don't know, I guess not. So, they're, they're, they are not married in this movie, but so, then... So, so not, you know, his, his, you know, he's not putting his marriage on the line, he's putting his engagement on the line, which is no less important, really. So, that's one big problem, and another big problem with this movie is that it doesn't seem to really know who it wants the main character to be. 
because the movie kind of bounces between having Iago be the main character and having Aladdin be the main character. And it's it seems really sort of unfocused in that regard. Um, and it's I mean there's like there's nothing wrong with having multiple protagonists, of course, but it doesn't seem to know which one of them to focus on. I, I I loved that one. Um, I I loved I I loved that <laughs> how Ron delivered that line, but um anyway. So what was I saying? So yes, it it felt sort of unrefined like that. And when when the movie has lack of focus like that, it it tends to feel like it's meandering around and that i think was the biggest problem with cinderella 2 incidentally was the fact that it just it had like a, a, a this really distinct lack of focus and i, th I think there's a lot of that in this movie too and i i don't know how clearly i got that scene across there i i said that um Abbas Mall and Jafar come... Oh, God, that's probably the worst continuity gaffe right there is when he goes past downstream, and then all of a sudden he's behind the rock. It just makes no sense to me. But anyway, um, when I say that Jafar and Abbas Mall come to kidnap the Sultan, uh, it, Jafar does not show himself immediately. He sort of disguises himself to look like the... Uh, to to look like the uh, n not not the thieves that Avis Mall's been palling around with, but you know, like sort of generic like Nazgul looking thieves, and it doesn't seem uh, and and then but you know like they start using the magic and he doesn't show J Jafar doesn't actually show himself to Aladdin in that scene, but. I just, it seems so weird to me that the first conclusion that Aladdin jumps to is that Abbas Mal knows magic, which, if he did, why would he not have used it long ago? And especially if he knows such powerful magic, like, why has he been hiding in this cave? Why is it, I don't know, it just, Aladdin's intelligence and cunning seems to sort of fluctuate as the plot deems necessary, and... I think when any character's traits kind of slip in and out as the plot deems it necessary, it it becomes really distracting and really irritating to me. And by, I don't know how many people noticed this, but I made a, I sort of poked fun at the continuity gaps in this movie by having the singamajigs in my background constantly changing positions. But um, and eventually it just changes to where they're gone, and my little uh, and my little pistol is sitting up there. But I think that that was probably one of the I don't know, one of the more irritating things about this movie was how much the characters sort of change with the demands of the plot. Like here, where the genie. He tries this hand-stretching trick twice, you know, with all his other magical abilities. The only thing he can seem to do in this scene is that little hand-stretching trick. And it just... I... Uh, it just irritates me so much when, you know, like, a character will forget they can do this or not remember that they can do that just because if they remembered, the scene would be over in a matter of seconds. It just... It's it's really sort of lazy writing, I think. And in this scene, you know, where Jafar is, you know, smacking them around and tossing them out the window, shooting fireballs at them, opening up the pits of lava, when supposedly he's a genie and he can't kill anyone, I just... Uh, I don't know how this was meant to be non-lethal in any way, shape, or form. But um, this this little bit coming up here, this Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny bit, if if any of you are fans of Tenacious D, um, I just I, I was really really proud of this bit, um, where 
I, I, I sort of cut together this little thing, you know, with the Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny audio, because Jafar's lamp melting and Jafar kind of exploding reminded me a lot of the scene where they defeat Satan at the end of Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. Spoiler alert, I guess. But it's... uh. I, I, I'm really proud of how I edited it together. I think it matched up with the music and matched up with the scene really well. But uh, I, I really did enjoy this this bit. I think it's one of the bits that I'm more proud of. So I'm kind of coming up on the tail end of this here. Um, I will be uh, doing VEDs later this month. No, well, not this month, but uh, but it, during uh, September, I'll be doing the vlog every day in September thing, um, along with Matt Guyon, and uh, that should be a lot of fun. So we'll, uh, you can look forward to that. Um, much, obviously, many more videos in September. I've been kind of falling behind during this month just because I've been settling into my new job. But, uh, yeah, I think that this review turned out pretty well. Um, oh, another thing I, I should clarify at the end of this, you know, when Aladdin says he wants to go out and see the world, um, Jasmine does go with him, because uh, my girlfriend sort of asked, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, does he just leave Jasmine there? And well, no, this, like I said, this was kind of a pilot movie for the Aladdin TV series, and so... I think, uh, if, you know, it was basically intended to be a pilot in that way, I think. And I think it really fails in that regard because they don't build up this ending at all. It just comes out of nowhere, absolutely nowhere. This this resolution that they're going to go out and see the world, they're not going to stay cooped up in the palace, it just comes completely out of left field. It just... It amazed me when I rewatched this movie because I had forgotten a lot of what happens in this movie from when I watched it as a kid, and this it amazes me how half-assed and thrown together out of nowhere that ending was. But uh, yes, I'm coming up on the uh, on the tail end of this review. So again, I want to thank my girlfriend and thank Linkara for helping you know uh, get this video you know to be pretty popular and you know getting me like I said 30 plus new subscribers and uh, once again welcome to you all. And uh, I hope uh, I hope that uh, you will be entertained by my videos for for uh, many many years to come. Uh, the, like I said, the next uh, Disney Direct DVD will be Pocahontas 2. That will be in the month of December, not November like I was hoping. Um, but uh, it, it should be pretty good. I, I'll be watching that uh, pretty soon. Uh, at the end of this video, I've, uh, I've also uh, started using new title cards. Uh, new, uh, sorry, new, new credit card credits uh, slides. Uh, which uh, I really like the look of and I think is better than just, you know, my flat, you know, black style. And uh, I like, and I'm also working on my new intro, which should hopefully be completed sometime during September. And um, yes, so thank you all for watching. Goodbye.